Oh my god, wow. He got a in 100 days. <laughs> One, two, and three, open your eyes. Wow. <laughs> Dude, there are so many other techniques for a blind person. Hi, I'm Shreya Srivitsan. I'm the founder of Firefly. And I'm here with Rafi, sir. So Rafi actually is an NLP practitioner and a trainer. And he trains internationally as well. So do you want to say a little bit about yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. So I've been into this domain of uh, transforming lives, basically I call. Through neuro-linguistic programming, which is the short form is NLP. I'm also a behavioral scientist. I train directly with the creator of co-creator of NLP, Dr. John Grinder in Europe. And I also studied with more than 20 international experts. I've uh, been doing these workshops for the last 17 years, yeah. Pan India, uh, like eight cities across India. And then I also worked with more than 200 corporates, trained people from all walks of life. I've been blessed enough, you can say. Uh, army officers, gold medal doctors, Stanford graduates, corporate CEOs, HR heads, uh, psychologists, so all segments of people they would have attended my uh, workshops and transformed their lives. Wow. Now you know why I couldn't introduce him myself. <laughs> in Firefly, we are more into counselling and mental well-being. Right. But NLP is a bit different and right. I've attended your workshops twice and every time it's like, oh my god, wow. Uh -huh. And it's like immediate change. Right. Everything is quick. Quick. Um, so can you tell me like a little bit about NLP, like what's sure. your elevator pitch? So basically NLP is a field of study which helps an individual to enhance their performance their potential from point A to point B at the fastest possible manner wow. by reprogramming their mind and interrupting their existing patterns and embed new patterns right okay. NLP has got multiple methods and tools within it for example something like a clean language something like a swish pattern something like a eye movement desensitization model uh, hypnosis is a has become a part of NLP over the years because in the initial days of NLP, the creators of NLP, they went and decoded, rather modeled one of the top hypnotists the world has ever produced, Dr. Milton Erickson. So hypnosis has become a part of NLP for helping people come out of their fears, phobias, anxieties, even some of the psychosomatic diseases like migraines, allergies yeah. and all. Yeah. Last workshop when I attended, there was someone really afraid of heights. Yeah. And I think you took like half an hour. Yeah, half an hour. And yes. we went up, we went up, she stood on the ledge. I mean, it was a safe ledge, but yeah. 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 But then she wasn't afraid anymore. She wasn't shivering. Or yeah, anything. she wasn't. Yeah. It was the 12th floor of the Correct, of hotel. Correct, yeah, of yeah. this hotel, yeah. When you talk about hypnosis, and this is like a common general question <laughs> that I get mostly is if the trainer is not well versed in mm, it, mm. or if they have ill intentions, then it can go really wrong. Yeah, yeah it can go really wrong. Hypnosis. Because I myself have personally studied with five to six international hypnotists. Mm. And if you're not trained enough, you're you're actually working with somebody's mind. You need to be right. really trained enough to be able to bring a change work to somebody's mind, exactly. you know. So it's very important for an individual to properly trained and certified in order for them to be able to work with somebody. What is the most aha moment you've had while in your journey in NLP? When I was working with a 26 year old boy mm -hmm. who was going through depression and he was under medications and all been treating multiple places and uh, the boy came to my program and I was able to coach him and help him and he was able to quit his medications, mm -hmm. you know, and then more than that, he wanted to achieve something big. Mm -hmm. And I conditioned and helped him program his mind and sent him to a martial arts teacher. And usually it takes three years for people yeah. to get black belt, right? He got a black belt in 100 days. <laughs> because a man who was completely like at the, at the bottom, okay. rock bottom of his okay. life, from there, he become like a martial arts black belt yeah, teacher. In 100 days. In 100 days, it's yes. like insane, right? Yeah. From from being under depression for two to three years and being under medications, being to come out of medications and then go back and do something incredible like this, yeah. like aha ha, you can say. <laughs> now, if I had to ask you right. to show us like any technique sure. uh, that is fast, that's impactful, sure. what technique would you show us that like blow us out of our mind? Very quickly, see how do you quickly get into a state of relaxed state, you know? Mm -hmm. So just if you just look into my finger like this, right? Okay. And just keep looking at my finger. Just keep looking at my finger, just keep looking at my finger, keep looking at Keep looking at it, keep looking at it, keep looking at it. Keep looking at it. And if you feel like closing your eyes, you may just close your eyes. Yeah, that's right, just close your eyes now. And just take a nice deep breath in and just breathe out and just relax your mind and relax your body 
That's right. One, two, and three. Open your eyes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I felt tired and. Like, yeah. Tired. So and it's it's one of the fastest ways to kind of cut your trail of thoughts and go into like an immediate. This is how you make your kids also fall asleep. <laughs> 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 but it's like some other technique that uh, they can also try. This is something which they can try. Okay. You know, That's anybody right. can try. It's like. Index finger, that's yeah. it, you know. Nothing else. I didn't use anything extra yeah. over here, you know. Yeah. And then it takes like 10 seconds to learn it. Anybody yeah. can do this. Anybody can learn it. Can I do it to myself? Yeah, you can do it to yourself, okay. slowly. You must have had many interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People ask me a lot of questions throughout all these yeah, years, yeah, right? Yeah. What is the most bizarre question that was a real head scratcher for you? See, there are these people who ask this what if questions, you know. Let's say we are teaching a module where, where there is like this, you know. Then they ask like, what if it's a blind person, how do you do it? And it's like, dude, there are so many other techniques for a blind person. So you, you know it that for a blind person you can't, this won't work, right? It's like, you know that it's dark and then you are asking that do you need a torchlight or do you need a bulb, right? So those are kind of some of the questions which people not everyone asks that, but then there are some human beings who ask just for the sake of the uh, question or trying to be smart, whatever, you know, their intention, we don't know. So people ask these questions, but yeah, then. But no. in terms of um, real, actual, possible questions, mm. what is the toughest one you think you've uh, received so far? I think, see, every question is, I don't look at it as a tough question or anything. As a question, how I can uh, add value to the person who is asking the question, right? So there's nothing that is appeared to be like, tough as such it's it's basically people ask pragmatic questions for example like how do you come up with this particular story at this particular point of time so those are some things which i have gained expertise over the years right it's like sometimes you ask uh, dhoni how did you play this particular shot at that particular time uh, we call it as unconscious competence so sometimes immediately i may not be able to answer that question because it's coming from an unconscious with so many years of experience it may take some time for me to go back and uh, articulate or retrieve that and then get back to them. So when these kind of questions come, that's the time probably when I'm not able to immediately answer. So like you were saying, NLP can also be used for people with disabilities. Uh, what kind of disabilities? Um, blindness, maybe they lost a limb. Oh yes, because see, we have had people who are 100% blind who have come for a workshop and learned NLP because NLP has got to do with your performance enhancement, your belief systems, belief system. your behavior patterns, right? So all of this. So whether they are blind, whether they are an amputee, whether they are deaf, or they're dumb, uh, they still have got behaviors, they still have got beliefs, they still have got their patterns exactly, which yeah. we can work with. So there is, there is no... A uh, hard and fast rule that we can only work with people who are fully uh, equipped with their all their senses or the body parts. Correct. So it's possible to work with any human being. What is your favorite tool? My favorite tool uh, in NLP, the fastest, is a tool called a spiral somatics. Spiral somatics is how do you identify a person's values, beliefs, turn-ons, turn-offs in less than 60 seconds of seeing a person, wow. okay. even without the opening their mouth. That's my all-time favorite. Yeah. I tried getting it out of him during the <laughs> workshop, but yes, I guess I'll just do my master's course. But I actually find NLP very, very intriguing, mm. very, very interesting because you like dwell deep into like your psychology. Right, right. It's not just, oh, this happened to me, that happened to me, but it's about like, what is your belief system? Correct. Okay. Correct. I understand that you got it from so and so, right. but now how do we change it? Correct. And how do we change it in a most... The shortest possible. Yeah, the shortest So possible. we call it as accelerated growth using time compression. Okay. So accelerated growth means what you can achieve much faster. Like time compression, when somebody takes it like six sessions and maybe six, six hours, we do it in like one session in Correct. 40 minutes. Yeah. Right, so that's like time compression. You can, you can help somebody become a millionaire in like less than 12 months where people typically think that it'll take four to five years. Correct. Because like most of the time it's just our mental blocks, right? Like exactly. people be like, oh, I'm not like earning money even though I do so much of hard work, but you're not looking into your fear of, you know, success or you might have the fear of exactly. failure. There's exactly. so much more things. Exactly. So how is this different than counseling? Oh, see, counseling is basically, uh, I would say one counseling is a test match and this is a 2020. <laughs> NLP has got vast Techniques and tools, counseling has got only one technique or tool. Okay. It is mostly talking. Whereas NLP can use a switch pattern, it can use a figure of eight, it can use a clean language, it can use a submodality shift, it can use a hypnosis, it can use a reverse psychology. But counseling is just one. 
So it comes like like CBT. Yeah, that's it. Mostly it's CBT, it's, right? Mostly it's like self-reflective. Right. And mostly it's CBT. So NLP has got multiple. So what if I combine counseling and NLP? Oh, it'll be very nice. It'll be a wonderful combination, because today in many psychology courses NLP is. Uh, okay. become a part of the curriculum, right? And moreover, the founders of NLP, the creators of NLP, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, they have got a psychology background. Psychology. So Richard Bandler was a psychologist in the University of Santa Cruz, California. He was a psychology graduate and John Grinder was a linguistic professor there. So they both have the psychology background. Okay. Uh, so psychology and NLP combined together is like gulab jamun and ice cream. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's pure gold. It's amazing. And I think uh, my invitation, my suggestion to the psychologist, I invite them to come and explore the field of NLP as well because you can help many of your clients get results in a much faster pace. Sometimes we just need to come out of our mental maps and limiting uh, beliefs and, and just explore NLP. You know, If you don't like it, fair enough, you don't have to apply it. But even before tasting a dish, how can you say that it's not good? Correct. You know, we were in, map is not the territory. Yeah, map is not the territory. So I would invite all of you to come and experience it. We do workshops pan India in in seven uh, cities across India: Chennai, Bangalore, Bombay, Delhi. You know, so people are welcome. So NLP can also be used by individuals who are not practitioners or psychologists or counselors. They can oh, use yes. it for themselves. Absolutely, we have had homemakers, we have had software engineers, we have had marketing professionals. So NLP can be used by any individual who wants to enhance his or her performance, their productivity, get rid of their limiting blocks, okay. you know, limiting beliefs, change their unresourceful behavior patterns and take their life to the next level of excellence. It is, it is useful for any human being who wants to progress in their life, simple. Since you uh, mentioned progress, right. I want to ask you, what, what do you see in the future of NLP? Like when it comes to people trying to become NLP practitioners themselves? I see a very bright future because uh, the awareness of NLP is now going from tier 1 cities to tier 2 cities also. For example, in this program which you are attending in, in uh, Chennai right now, we have somebody who has come from a small town in Maharashtra, right? Yes. So, so we have people from Warangal, we have people from Vizag, we have people coming from like Latur in Maharashtra. So this clearly shows that this is spreading fast and wide throughout the country mm -hmm. and people are understanding the potential and the impact of it, right? So right. that's the reason they are willing to travel, invest five days, six days, come learn and, and change their lives and go back. Correct. And it's nothing like, you know, experiencing it in real life. Absolutely. The first time I actually came for your workshop, I came blindly because <laughs> my mom was like really impressed and she's like, okay, come, we'll go. Right, right. So I came and then I was like, oh my God, this is like some insane <laughs> like learnings that learning I'm getting. Yes. Then after I went home, I tried like an online workshop. Chuma, I just like put it on and I was like, this is so boring. <laughs> like I can't even deal with this. <laughs> but with you, that's why even when like I got through this time, it's because online they give you information. Correct, correct. It's not correct. like they don't. Correct. But it just, it's nothing like actually, you know, being there with somebody doing interventions on other people. When you see the change actually happening in front of you, you front understand of your eyes. what type of questions to ask. And the best part is you can do it on yourself. Absolutely. So it's like, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so people, people are not aware. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're doing it through your channel to build awareness amongst the people, even if one person watches this video and learns it, it can help at least his or her family, exactly. you know, yeah. if not the world. So every family, if one person can learn this, you can have happy families across the country and then we have a happy country and a happy world. Yeah, because you know, they always say it only takes one person in a family to change. Absolutely. So my intention or mission or rather vision is to take NLP to every household of India. Wow. You know, through, so we are coming up with regional language programs also oh, very wow, soon, nice. like Tamil, Bengali, uh, Marathi, uh, Gujarati. Uh, we are coming up with India. Yes, we are coming <laughs> up soon with regional language programs as well, so that every layman can also learn it. Since in our podcast, our listeners can only listen; they can't see this technique. Correct. Can we maybe talk about distortions? Let's say there's a boyfriend and a girlfriend, or a husband and wife, for example, right? Let's say the wife goes for a business trip. And the wife doesn't call the husband for two days because she's really occupied and she comes back late to the hotel room and she sleeps. And the husband says that, hey, you did not call me for the last two days. 
you don't love me anymore like you used to love me earlier oh. classic distortion the reality is the objective reality is the wife did not call the husband that's it but because she was tired because she had a long day you know, she she could didn't want to go on the phone but this gentleman distorted the information that not calling for two days is equal to she not being mean. loved she doesn't love me like she used to love me yeah. earlier so we make these small kinds of distortions every single day and and that actually messes up people's life yeah, you know exactly yeah so if they come out of this limiting distortions and deletions and generalizations a life can be much much more beautiful and yeah. peaceful and happier yeah and what he just said is like the smallest thing yeah it's like in math 1 plus 1 is 2 that is what he just explained <laughs> yes so it's like it's amazing actually like i wish everybody got to try it out <laughs> Honestly, it's crazy. Right, it's people have to come and experience yeah, it you know, in like, live, yeah. in in person, please, yeah. in person. There's like something about offline, like the energy you're getting to connect yeah, with others, yeah, yeah. and it's like a safe space. So, yes. Yeah, I hope you guys try it out. So welcome, thank you once again, Shreya. Thank Amazing you. chatting with you. You too. It was Pleasure. Great talking yes. to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Lovely. So, here is Dhruv, and I would want to give this quote to Dhruv. This is this is one of my very very personal favorite quotes which i've which i've used like for last couple of years for many corporate programs including the programs which i did for the tatas and the infosys and all this something <laughs> which is very personal to me and i also kind of have this uh, belief or habit that whatever some things that is very dear to you uh, we need to part with it and we need to be okay with that right so I was just telling about a pen which I gifted to one of my students, and a gift a stone which I said, and that's when Drew asked, "Will you give this quote to me?" And I said, "Sure." And here it is. It's all Drew, now you have to. Just say, always if you find an opportunity, grab it. Wow! Wow! Right operation you can do. Yeah. For this moment, I came here. My just is, my dream is completed now. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.